G'day guys, it's Calvin from the Catching Company in New Zealand. Right, I'm going to cover two topics today. Um, I'm helping a mate out in the USA and um, I do do a bit of online help and it is normally paid for. For Jared I'm going to do it for free, we get on really well. And I'm going to cover another topic and the reason I'm doing Jared's for free is I want to cover another topic on these that I see a lot and a lot of guys are having problems with. And um, it's to do with the trigger systems on the one you said VVTIs when using a Haltech. Okay. And it says in the help file of the Haltech that it is um, 36 minus 2 and 3 on the home. And that pretty much gives it away. Um, and it's really, really obvious once you've made the stuff up. And I hate. We've made the stuff up. Okay, that's how I know the stuff because I've made it. But I sat down and I just worked my way through it and I, I worked out what I needed to do. And it's really easy to get it wrong. Right, uh, we're going to look at some pictures. There was a post. I'm not going to go through the post on the internet where someone was asking about the trigger systems. He mentioned it's a 1UZ VVTI and how it should be wired. And on the 1UZ VVTIs, if I go to the picture and... Um, so that's the cam sensor on the front of the engine. Uh, and that is the normal home sensor that we use. Uh, VVTIs use a, use a 36 minus 2 on the crankshaft. And if you're wiring, say, a link, you would use that one. That's probably a dirty word in a Haltech video, but I'm an ECU slut anyway. I don't care what ECU you run. They're all pretty much, they do the same stuff. The principles are the same. Uh, but they have their own little peculiarities, and this is where Haltech come in. They don't use that sensor there, and you can't see me pointing at it anyway, because look, there it is, that, that, that one. Yeah, they use, they don't use that one. Instead, let's see, I borrowed the man's photo off the internet. I hope you don't mind. He, they use those ones. So the uh, left hand cam sensor, or the VVTI sensor, is the input, is the home as well. And the right hand is for the cam control. The other bank of cam control. You can set the left hand one to do both. I happen to have a map for Kyle's truck. And I was going through. So we go up to the trigger system. Um, it's got... Uh, trigger system. And in this case, I've used the 3 UZFE. And you can see here, 36 with two teeth missing gap, home, three teeth, one big, one medium, one small. And we know that the front one has one single tooth, so it can't be that front one. Um, you can actually make them run on that front one. Uh, you have to set it up differently. So you set it up as a generic missing tooth single home. Um, I've, I've probably got one there that I've done, uh, but of course then it comes into trouble of setting up the VVTI. So use the one in the middle, use the effectively the VVTI position sensor for the home signal. Um, we're going to run through these settings. Trigger signal location is on the crank, 36 minus 2. And those can't be changed as soon as you put in 3 UZFE. Okay, so 2 UZFE also works. Um, so, and we've got Reluctor and Reluctor. They can be changed. And remember, if you're using the, on the, on the wiring diagrams, if you're using the home, the, the, the ground for the triggers, make sure you enable the ground reference. Uh, I've got that information here. Have I got it on the pictures? Um, let me see if I can find it. Just hold right there. I had opened it this morning. Okay, so crank input. We don't use the switched, but if you're using this input, this 15 for the ground, for the cam and the crank sensors, then you need to enable the ground input in those trigger settings. If you've linked it into these grounds over here, 
um, then you don't. It's different. But if you're using that solely on that 15, as it shows in the diagrams, then you do need to enable it in the settings in the ECU. Right, uh, we're going back over here. So that's that ground reference there enabled. And you can check it by doing a trigger scope. Haltech actually have a really cool trigger scope. And if your references are too low, if your ground, if your scope patterns or the voltages are too low, then changing that may help. Okay, now looking at the wiring, to set up the wiring, we actually go down to cam control. Down to cam control down here. <coughs> and of course you've enabled the cam control and the disable able functions. You go down here to where it is and you go to the wiring. And this is where you allocate um, everything correctly. So as soon as you switch it to 3UZ, it takes um, B2. This is the B plug, B2, and it allocates it as the home signal. So that's done when you set the trigger settings. And we come back over here. So you have the home as your B2, and then you set your and your and sorry, you set your intake cam input as the home signal, and then you set your VVTI solenoid. You can put any of the um, uh, digital pulse outputs or the stepper outputs for the cam control. And then intake cam 2 input, I've put that on a um, SPI 3, okay, or, or one of the the, uh, the pulse inputs. And then, of course, you do the output, the cam output. And that is how you do the 3 UZs and the 1UZ VVTIs and the 2UZs. Uh, well, you can use the 2UZ trigger settings on the 2UZ, but I'm pretty sure they're the same. So make sure you, you get that correct okay that is important guy stuff up on it all the time um and i see this lots i'm actually that's going to help this guy who's doing who's fixing someone else's loom we all should help others out where we can and uh it's going to help jared out anyway so now i'm actually going to go and we're going to look over jared's wiring okay so for those guys uh, that are wondering what i'm doing now i'm actually going to help jared out uh, it might be a bit rambly, but I'm just going to sit here and talk to myself in my lounge. Beautiful. It's a nice day here in New Zealand. And uh, Jared's in the USA. And uh, we often chat about my gardens and my animals and all those sorts of things. And kind of, he's kind of similar in many ways. We get on really well. So he is setting up a Nexus R3, I believe. We're going to go, I've got to find it. It's here. R3 and so he scanned in the quick start guide which is just the standard quick start guide um, uh, there we go so he's got all of the quick start I couldn't go down because I was at the bottom so he's just scanned that in and he's done all of this on computer Jason and I do this so often we just scribble some stuff down and then I scan them and then we can adjust it uh, our writing looks like doctors uh, we don't quite have the time sometimes to set all this up but we've got some uh, the pin out uh, we've got some sensors that he's going to get pressure sensor oil pressure fuel pressure I actually really like the combo sensors the Bosch combo sensors done other videos on them I use lots of them he's got a fix fix fuel sensor and he's got a boost pressure solenoid it looks like it's on the buy list I'm not going to do the connectors uh, needed because I sell connector sets I'm, I'm not going to hassle him too much about what it says on that page, but he's going to get a connector set. And if we look at his inputs and outputs, and I can probably, the other thing I can do over here, which is really cool on the Haltex, I really like this function. Um, IO report. This is a really cool thing. I really like this. Boom. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll probably give um, this and I will flick this over to uh, Jared. 
and he can have a bit of a look at this as well. You see, I've got a purge control solenoid. He doesn't have a purge control on, solenoid on his one. Though you wouldn't know that because I haven't looked at his yet. Uh, engine check light. Um, here in New Zealand, we require a check light to make them legal. Well, if the computer is able to do an engine check light, then we need to wire that up. But if you run out of outputs, you just don't wire it up, and uh, you say there's not enough outputs, and the cert man says that's all fine. I don't make the rules, I just got to stick with them. Um, now, I've got a vehicle speed input. I'm running off mine off the tail shaft. And if I look at Jared's, uh, 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 let's try again. He's put two front wheel speed sensors in. And I'm not quite sure why he's done that. Uh, so he will discuss that with me afterwards. But I use the one on the gearbox tail shaft. He's got a flex fuel sensor, which is good. And, oh, and again, back to those cam and crank sensors. Crank, crank. VVI, VVTI left and left, which is correct. He's done that. And then he's got that right hand on that SPI. Um, I would normally earth, use that earth there. Chook. So I would shear the earth between these two. All, well, all of them. Okay, so all those get the same earth. Um, from that, uh, um, from the, the trigger earth. Um, he's got drive-by-wire, clearly, because he's got TPS1, TPS2, AP1, APP1, and APP2. And I did actually have a drive-by-wire wiring set up before. Um, I maybe see if I can find that for Jared, and I'll flick that over as well. Call it temp and an intake temp, fuel pressure and oil pressure. I'm not sure what the rolling anti-lag is, uh, so we probably should check check that. I'll, just, I'll see if he's going to reply. I'll just ask him now. Right, a message has been dispatched. Uh, now he's got coolant pressure. Coolant pressure. Now, I would think that the coolant pressure would probably normally go on to an AVI. So, um, I have used those Bosch combo sensors as coolant pressure sensors. I just did one on another vehicle. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to watch it on the dyno, checking if there's any pressure spikes. And I actually quite like that as an idea. Um, not strictly necessary, but it, it's kind of cool for testing. Um, but he needs to just check whether that is allocated correctly. 5 volts, yes. Signal grounds, yes. So that's all good. Uh, knock sensors, I would like to see those knock sensors added. Ooh, what did I do? That was not my intention right there. So I would like to see uh, knock sensors uh, wired up, and I'm sure he's going to. Here's an oil temp. I highly recommend it. And he's got aircon. Uh, whether he's going to do a <coughs> with me an aircon input or not. Um, generally, I'd put them on an SPI uh, for the aircon input, um, and then you'll be your aircon in and aircon out. Uh, y band, yes, that's good. Fuel injectors, yes. Need to wire those. He's got boost control, so he kind of suggests that he might be putting a turbo on his on his UZ. Uh, there's a taco output, which is good. Probably wanted to wire that ignition switch input, and um, he probably wants to wire those two grounds. Probably important to, to do those. And these will be cam control, cam control, that's good. Uh, he's actually has, has an engine check light, okay, so he does have an engine check light. Uh, right. So 12 volt out. Let's put a low current out. Now I don't. Did I see a fuel pump output? There's no fuel pump output and fan output. Maybe we've got some further down. Put a fuel pump output here and a fan output here. So I really think he's going to need those. And he's going to need a power supply to the coils and injectors. Okay, so, oh, there it is there. Sorry. Sorry. 
coils and injectors um, and then of course he's going to need that fan output and that fuel fuel pump output a little bit limited in the H3 but um, I'm oh, sorry the A3 R3 but still a really cool little unit what he's doing and it's perfect to run the little UZ um, so that's looking pretty good Jared I'm pretty happy with that uh, I've as I said over here this of course was a 2500 so what I actually recommend you do is sit down and write your um, your tune as such how about I just I send this one over this one made it run ran okay um, and then you can take this map slam it in your R3 set it up the program put your inputs and outputs in check you put everything in the right place um, and allocate everything nicely would be a really really good way to go right guys um, if you've got some questions chuck some questions in um, I do my best to answer all of them but I just can't keep up these days that's just what happens but if there's other people that can help out too that would be great and uh, we'll talk to you again soon we'll catch you later